well, I'd recommend that as a really good tool. Okay, uh, so we started the recording, I think. Yes. Um, so want to talk a little bit. Let me get the chat up too so I can see it. Um, so um, Maggie talked about the use of hypothesis within the LMS, and it's really powerful there. But in this session, we're going to briefly explore how you can use um, how we can use how we can use um, hypothesis outside of the OMS and why you might want to. Um, so, um, okay, uh, we have so many people showing up in the other session. So, does anyone have any questions about hypothesis before we get into this? Okay, well, Hypothesis is a web annotation tool uh, that lets you do social annotations. And the annotations could be set to be public. They could be set to be private for your own use. So you could choose to use Hypothesis primarily as a social bookmarking tool where you can share your bookmarks later if you choose. But it's a nice way of keeping track of interesting things that you find, even if you just want to use it for your own private use. But the real power is sharing annotations with others. And you can also restrict annotations to a group. So what I'd like everyone to do, and once you've created these annotations, you can create your own tags so that you can organize information. Um, so what I'd like everyone to do is, um, is to actually try it. But first, uh, you have, before you do this, um, go to the Hypothesis website, which is right here. I'm going to share the link in chat. I am going to share the link in chat when I type on the right box in the right computer. Okay, um, so go to that address. And if you don't have an account, create one. It's free. Um, and that's a nice thing about Hypothesis so that if you want to use it beyond the LMS, students will have to create their own accounts, which can take a little bit of effort, but it, it and it can be a little challenging because I, when I've had students do it this way, it generally took a week or two before they all joined the group that was created for the course, but it gives them some additional power. And we'll look at that in more detail. Um, does everyone already have a hypothesis count or, cre have, or are creating one? John, can yeah. I ask a question? Sure. So if like, I was just in the other session, right? So we went through um, hypothesis sure from blackboard so that's not the same thing right it's not the same thing well it it is and it isn't it looks the same when you're using it but mm -hmm. when you the advent i'm going to jump ahead a little bit that when you use it within blackboard all this initial work is set up that blackboard will automatically create a group and all the annotations are set to just be done within the group so students will automatically be placed in it they don't have to create an account they don't have to join the group and they don't have to remember to select the group when they create annotations so if you want the use to be solely within the class you should probably use Blackboard because that does all the startup work and it's just there and easy to use and they don't have to activate it. They don't have to add it to their browsers or do anything else. But if you want to create, if you want your students to learn how to use Hypothesis so that they can use it in the future or that they can keep annotations that last beyond the course because at the end of the term, they lose access to their courses, then using Hypothesis outside the LMS can be useful. And they can also choose to make public annotations and add to that, you know, the general social networking out there more broadly, which can be good or bad. Some of the things we see obviously in social postings can become kind of scary as we've seen, you know, last week. Um, but, but I'd encourage you to try it. Um, has anyone said, okay, so Kate has an account. Um, does anyone else have an account or, or is in the midst of setting one up? Well, it depends. So the question is, what is the likelihood that students will use the account post-graduation? 
It depends on what they do. If they go into higher ed, there's a really good chance they'll be using it. If they're going to be working with teams or groups where they might be gathering information, they might be using it. So there's a lot of uses that might occur post after the class. Um, some students, you know, said they found it really useful and just used it to keep track of their own records. Now, there's other things you could use for that. Digo is one of the most popular ones. But um, Okay, it looks like many people have it. So let's go forward then. So what I'm going to do is I created a, I created a group for the class. Uh, and let me share the link for, the, uh, not for the class. <laughs> this is what you would do if you created a class group and you do that right on the Hypothesis website. One of the options there is to create a group. And let me just hop over to that for a second. I've got too many computers going on. Here, I'm gonna close this other computer so I don't accidentally grab and move the mouse away. Um, so I'm going to hop out for just a second and go to hypothesis. Um, and what I would recommend doing if you're going to use it or if you wanna try using it for your own use, one more time, you have to type it correctly, it turns out, um, in order for it to work. Um, one of the things I'd recommend is that you add a plugin. Um, if, you, if you're if you using Chrome, just go to the Chrome extensions and, and add the extension for Hypothesis. That way it's always there. But what we're going to do here is I'm going to log in. I've got my credentials saved on this computer. And I'm going to go to the groups. And I created, the, and the way in which you would create a group, if you wanted to create one for your class, is you would just click on create a new group. And once you create the group, you give it a name, and then you would go over to, um, and you would go over to that group. Here we go. Where is that? Um, one more time. You would go to the group, and it is, <laughs> there is a recording from the last session. Minimize that. Um, As we go 2021 workshop, that would be this one. Okay, so here's a group and, and this shows the annotations and I created a few annotations just to get us started. Um, and what I'd like you to try doing is join the group by clicking in that link if you have a hypothesis account set up and then just going out and finding some resources related to educational uses of hypothesis. And, and. John, I'm not really seeing how to join the group. Okay, if you click on that link and you, you have your hypothesis account set up, it should just take you directly to that. Click on it in the chat. Yes, click on the link oh, okay. in the chat, and that okay. should then let you join the group. And once you're in the group, you would then be able to add annotations to the group. Got it. Thanks. Okay, you're welcome. And so, for example, I have it set up as a browser plugin, which is by far the easiest way of doing it. You don't want to generally have a separate, you generally don't want to have a separate tab open. Uh, to be able to use it. It's much easier when it's connected. And there are applets that you can connect for all, all the major browsers. It works with Safari, it works with Edge, it works with Firefox. I don't know if they still support Internet Explorer. I think they may have dropped that as most people have. But uh, let's say I wanna go and find an example. And these are just some really good examples, well, some good examples of uses. Two of them were podcasts that we did where you can actually go in and annotate the podcast, the podcast transcript specifically. Uh, but one was with Gardner Campbell and the other was with Maggie Smule who just gave a presentation on, on her uses of it. But uh, let me just show how you could do that. So if you see, when you get to the link, um, you could just go, you can you should be able to click on it and click on visit annotations and context and then we'll see those annotations and my computer is downloading videos in two sessions right now so it's um okay so actually here's here's some of the annotations and the annotation is unavailable 
because I have to log in. To be able to use that, I have to log in. There we go. And I saved my login credentials. So here are some public annotations that have been made, but we can also visit those that have been made within the group. And so if I go down to the group, I have um, the, as we go 2021 workshop, and this is the annotation I put together sometime, well, 11 hours ago, uh, sometime last night. And you notice I added two tags to that, and you can create tags for any of your annotations and ask students to do it. And a really common way of having students do this is send them out on some sort of a quest to find resources, to find papers, to find articles, to find websites. And you might create a set of tags you ask them to use. And you can then have them tag those things. And then if while you're in the group, you click the tags, it will show all of the the things that have been tagged with this. And so these are things that I have tagged. Well, these were things I tagged yesterday. But uh, again, if we go back to that, um, if we go back to that URL, there we go. Um, once you're in there, if you wanna tag something, let me go to one of these sessions. and say, here you wanted to talk about, let's say, this is the specific page is about a recording of a webinar they did involving English uses of hypothesis. Let's say I wanted to tag that in hypothesis. I would block that. I would click on hypothesis. I would choose annotate. This side thing comes in from the sidebar. And I would say, um, maybe type in some uh, examples of uses of hypothesis in English courses. And I probably don't wanna have the extra capital letter in there. And now this is because I started with a group, it's in the group, but I could change that. I could change it to be a private annotation just for me. So if I wanna keep track of resources for a paper that I'm working on, I could set all the annotations to private. I can create tags. Or if I'm trying to find examples for a course, I could create a tag from my course and keep it a private annotation just as a resource I might wanna use at some point in the future for specific topics. So if I'm teaching a course in, um, in econometrics and I'm looking at a good example of, let's say, um, ordered probit models, I can create a tag for that and then I could use that as an example or an example problem that I might use. So it's a nice way of keeping track of resources for yourself or having students find resources and annotate them. Or you could have students go out, for example, and um, and annotate. Well, let's say you want to have them evaluate arguments. If you want to have them to do some work in critical thinking, you can create tags that analyze different parts of an argument and have them place them in context in speeches that they see on the web, or web pages, or blog posts, or other things. So, um, so that's basically how you would do it and how students would do it. The main thing is they have to remember to set, if you're doing st having students collect this, if you're having students use hypothesis outside of the course where they actively find documents and annotate them, you have to remind them and it will take probably a week or so, maybe two, to make sure that they save all the things with the class tag. Because when I've used it with classes, the most common mistake that students will do is I'll just save it as either a public tag or a private tag. And if it's not within the group, it's harder. Well, private tags you will never find and public tags will be harder to find um, Although if you have their information and they're part of the group, you should be able to click on it and find them. But generally you will only see the things that they have made specific, the tags they've made specific to the, to the group. And it did take a while to get my students to remember to always set it to that group. Once it's set, it'll stay set unless they change it. But getting them to do it the first time was a challenge. So can they go back and correct it if yeah. they have Okay. So they can look at their own tags and then just edit them by changing it. For example, if I click on any of the tags I created here, um, if I go back to the work, the workshop ones here, I've got a number of these now. Um, 
well, I will post this to this workshop first, but if I go back to, um, well, let me go back to the web page here. Once I get this out of the way, um, if I go back to the website and I look at the tags within the group, let's say here, no, oh, that's going to take me to the same place. But if I look at my own tags, where is it? One more. Oh, come on. There we go. If I... Why am I not seeing this? Um, I'm trying to get back to the group. There we go. If I go back to the group, let's say I go to... Um, Groups. There we go. I went to my page instead of the group tab page again. Uh, I didn't get much sleep last night. I'm sorry about that. But if you go to the group, you'll see all the tags for it. You will see all the members. And these are all the members. Okay. So I see a number of people have joined already. So if you want to see any of the, if you want to see what people have tagged, I see, uh, well, I've created six. You guys haven't yet. But um, if you have a class, you would see all the students there. You could click on their names and see all the things that they've annotated and save with a group tag. Or you could go up to the tags and see what people have tagged and get to that content. And if I went to one of my tags, let's say I want to go to, um, um, well, here, a criminal justice site, for example. Um, if I go to that document, I should be able to see it in context which is, here we go, to the URL. Then I'll be able to see any tags that students had made there. Oh, this was, this was Maggie's example. So I didn't, this, this was an example where I had a page annotation. So if I call it up, there's two types of text. There's the in-text ones, and then there's page annotations. And the page annotation was just a general annotation. So you could ask students to leave comments within the items, or, um, or you could have them annotate a block of text. So let me go back again. If we, um, if you wanna, oh, let's say you wanna tag, for some reason you wanna put SUNY as we go there, you click on the annotate option and then you type something about this. Um, I'll just type SUNY as we go, use of hypothesis. And now, and I can choose the tags and I could put, this was Maggie. So again, I will put criminal justice. There we go. Uh, and I will, I will type hypothesis. Except again, I probably want to spell it correctly. There. And it's now been posted to the group as an additional tag. There are other options within the tag if you edit it. You notice you do have some boldface italics. You can quote things. You can embed links in it. You could put an image in here. Um, you could put in LaTeX, for example. So if you're doing something in the sciences, if students know basic LaTeX, then you can have them embed mathematical typing right within this. Um, you know, you can do bolded lists and numeric lists and so forth. Um, but then you can also reply to tags. You can have threaded discussions going within a document, um, and that can be useful. So that's hy hypothesis outside of the web. If the main thing is you'd use this only if you want students to collect resources that they might be keeping later. Hypothesis is much easier to use within the LMS, which is why I was trying to get it here for a few years. And we finally have it. And we have it at least through next December. And if it's used enough, that's likely to continue because it's not very expensive. Uh, we're paying 3000 well, I think, yeah, $3,000 for a year right now. And we had literally thousands of uses of it. Um, in fact, I can show you the level of activity we had uh, just for the classes that used it before. One second. And I'm going to drag that over. It's loading right now. Um, it says hypothesis activity at none. That's just a bug in the programming. But um, and where did that go? One more time. Um, OK, sorry about that.
and we'll see it in just a second. We will see it in just a second. I've got all these videos rendering the background and downloading, so. It's, it will be there. So any questions? My suggestion is play with it, try it, and see if it's something you might want to use. But if you just want students to use it, it is far easier to do it within. And it looks like that's not going to restore. One more time. There we go. <laughs> This is not wanting to load. Students have responded really positively to this, and I have used it both outside of the LMS and within it. And honestly, they loved it within the LMS. They struggled with it a little bit outside of it, but we didn't use it quite as much. But several of them said they plan to use it in the future on their own or for other projects they were working on. And there we go. So there were 12,163 annotations with about, well, with, um, with 20 courses over the past year. So, and you can see there was some peak load issues there. Um, where is it? Here we go. Um, you could see it was really used very heavily beginning in September and onward. Um, this was Maggie's course over the summer, and this was my course. I was the only one using it last spring. So um, it was used pretty heavily. And October was kind of a peak use. Well, actually, September and October were the peak use. It tapered off a little bit, but um, there were quite a few people using it. One, uh, my class had 2,342 annotations um, on 54 different assignments. I was using it both as for a discussion forum as well as for peer review of, of their the student writing. So any questions? If you have any questions and want to learn more about it, if you need some help with it, just let me know and we can do a Zoom session. But um, I've really enjoyed using it and my students for the most part have as well. And I should be checking chat. It looks like I overwrote that window. So yeah, if, again, if anyone wants to, um, has any questions, just let me know. And I, <laughs> be, once the workout, the winter breakout workshops are over, I'm happy to meet with anyone on using it if you, if you need any assistance. But it's really easy to use in the LMS. It's not, it's not difficult to use it outside. Once students get set up with their own accounts and they add the plugins to their browser and they remember to set the annotations to group access. Okay, well, I am going to stop the recording.